Hey, welcome to Dixie Tech. This is our main building on campus, which is Building A. Each of our programs are split by floor and by color. We do have a couple of other things down here on the first floor that are important to note that you'll want to know about as a student. Right over here, this is our campus cafe, which is called the Tech Ridge Cafe. The Tech Ridge Cafe is open Monday through Thursday for lunch hour. Uh, as a student, you do get discounts on anything that they do in there as well as sometimes our culinary students will do specials out of there, which is really awesome. They do great foods such as salmon or barbecue, ribs, uh, steak, all kinds of different things that you can get from the campus store, as well as it's open to the community and the public, so you can come up anytime if you're a student or not. Right over here, this is our campus store. The campus store is also open Monday through Thursday, but they're open the entire time that we're open. So from about 8 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock at night, you can always go in there, you can grab a snack or a t-shirt or even a small lunch. But really the most important thing is that's where you would pick up any of your required materials. So textbooks, tool sets, stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs, any of that material that you need for your course can be picked up in the campus store. This is our auditorium, which we use for any of our on-campus events. We do karaoke in here with all of our students, so they can come and get churros, snacks, and then come and enjoy karaoke, as well as any of our other on-campus events for students are held in the auditorium. We also open up the auditorium for people in the community to come up and use it uh, for different meetings or things that they have that they need a bigger space to utilize. This is our culinary program. The culinary program is our only program located on the first floor of Building A. In the culinary program, our students learn all of the cooking competencies to go and be prepared to be a chef coming out of the program. The program is a year long. They spend nine months of it here learning all of their cooking competencies and a small portion of baking. They also do things like banquet dining, fine dining, catering. When they're finished with their nine months here, they actually spend three months after that going out and they send them to different restaurants to work in the field and get field experience as well as an externship. This is our smaller kitchen in here, uh, which is more restaurant up to restaurant standard. Over here is our larger kitchen, which uh, we call the bougie kitchen. It has all the same equipment, but gives a little bit more space for people to move around and work in here, as you can see. One of their final projects that they do in this program is they actually have to come up with an entire restaurant theme and idea. So they come up with a menu, they come up with exactly how much they would need to pay their employees, what the produce would cost, all of the business side of things, as well as what their menu would be and what they would serve. They actually pitch their idea to then the entire school. People vote on whatever menu they think would be the best or the restaurant they would want to go to. And whichever one gets the most votes, they actually get to do a pop-up restaurant right here at Dixie Tech and serve their menu. The rest of the culinary students that day work underneath them as head chef. This in here is our IT program or information technology. A lot of times when people think IT, they think somebody sitting behind a screen like coding all day long, which is definitely a viable field in IT, it's just not what we do here. This is the back end, so this is more the parts and pieces uh, and the hardware is what you're going to be doing. So you learn how to take apart and build PCs, you learn how to do network security, cyber security, uh, we learn cloud computing in this program. One of their final projects is they actually use these servers over here. The instructors will completely crash them and then it is the student's job to then figure out what's wrong and get them up and running and working again. So it's a lot of hands-on uh, experience that you're doing in this program. Uh, this is our drafting and design program. In this program, they start students out with pencil and paper initially and just drafting things by hand. Then they quickly move on to computer drafting with 2D and 3D drafting using programs such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Revit. They spend the first half of the program working all together and then they branch off into two different fields. They can either go into architectural drafting, which they are then prepared to do like big buildings such as this, houses, any type of architectural, or they can do mechanical drafting, which would be anything that is manufactured or built. So it can be things like 
what you use to hold your phone in the car or massage rollers, any of those types of things. That is what they do in this program. They then do a lot of 3D printing. You can actually see down here, this is one of the students' first projects that they actually do. What they will do in this project is that they have to come up with an abstract pencil holder. So they come up with a concept and idea, they create the draft from pencil, and then they're able to do it on the computers and then actually do the 3D print of it. As well as these are some projects over here that students were able to do, which were housing projects where they were given a very small plot of land and they did some tiny home projects. You can see the full process where they start with a very very simple uh, floor plan and then they move on to a 3D draft of the product. This is our mobile app development program. In this program, students learn how to code uh, using two different platforms. They learn iOS development as well as Android development. For iOS, they learn a coding program called Swift. For Android, they learn a coding program called Kotlin. You can do one program or both programs and gain that skill. In this program, you are able to develop several fully functioning apps in, as part of their projects. So they do some as group projects together and then they do final projects as well, developing their own app. As long as they meet certain criteria, they can develop whatever app that they choose. I've seen things such as gaming apps, self-help apps, mountain biking apps, all kinds of different things. If you are a type of person who loves coding, programming, problem solving, math skills, this is a really great program for you. Uh, this is our digital design program. In this program, students learn how to do marketing. They learn how to do videography, photography, how to build a website, how to do social media marketing, as well as they learn a little bit of 2D and 3D animation. In this program, they have this lab setting in here where they're able to utilize a lot of different equipment. So they have over here the DTG, which is a direct-to-garment printer. It essentially prints just like a normal printer would. They can come up with a mock design, put it into the DTG, and it will print directly onto the garment instead of having to do a press. They have vinyl printers in here so that they can do uh, stickers, vinyl posters, all kinds of different things. We have a photo lab in here so they can do green screen work as well as just normal photo laboratory work. Over here, we have a laser cutter so that then they can do things like puzzle boxes or any type of etching. Right over here as well, we have a whole bunch of lockers that are full of a bunch of different equipment, things like cameras, lenses, that students can then check out and utilize outside of the classroom and inside of classroom hours as well. If they want to shoot a wedding or shoot portraits, they can check out this equipment, use it for that project, and then just come and check it back in. We have a lot of different equipment, Sony, Fuji, Canon, so they can also figure out what type of equipment that they like the most. Then when they leave the program, they know exactly what they want to purchase. This is our medical assistant program. In this program, students learn how to become a licensed medical assistant. A medical assistant is someone that you see like 90% of the time that you go to the doctor's office. This is the person that's gonna take you back, take your height and your weight and your blood pressure, ask you what's wrong with you. Then typically your doctor will come in and tell you what's going on. They will leave and your medical assistant will come back in and get everything figured out as well as doing billing, booking, any of those types of things for you. So in this program, they learn all of those things. They learn how to do blood pressure. They learn how to also get phlebotomy certified. That's a big part of this program is they get a full phlebotomy certification so that they can do vaccines as well as IVs and any other things such as that. This is our phlebotomy technician program, and this is one of our shortest programs here on campus. You can get certified as a phlebotomist in as little as 10 weeks. In this program, they start at first on fake arms. So they are given a fake arm that has tubing that mimics veins. It's pumped with a fluid that mimics blood, and they do blood draws on those. And then if they want to poke, they also have to be willing to be poked. So they practice on each other a lot. They practice our, on our instructors as well. This in here is our biotechnology program. 
In this program, it's really great because they can work in a lot of different facets. They teach them anything to be able to work in any type of laboratory. So they can work in human genomics, they can work in agriculture, they can also work in forensics, uh, so studying DNA at crime scenes as well. In this program, they learn how to isolate proteins, purify proteins, as well as manipulate DNA. This in here is our pharmacy tech program. In this program, they spend nine months to get certified. They spend six months of it here, learning all of the practices that they need to know. They learn over 250 medications. They learn how to do pill counting, as well as they also learn how to do what is called compounding, so that they can turn medications into things like creams, like a diaper rash cream, into a liquid, so something that like a child could drink, into medicated chapsticks, any of those types of things. Well, compounding is a big portion of this course. They then spend the last three months of the course doing externship hours, so they send them to different pharmacies so that they are able to get that hands-on experience within the pharmacy. They teach them how to do this in a hospital setting as well as a traditional pharmacy setting, and they also teach them how to do medicated IV bags. This is our EMT program or our emergency medical technician. In this program, you can start with our basic EMT and then you can move on and do the advanced EMT as well to get both certifications. We call EMTs the adrenaline junkies of the medical world. They are our first responders. The people are showing up to whatever scene is happening. So a mass collision, an emergency birth, any of those types of things. They teach them how to do splinting, how to do uh, CPR, basic life support, uh, how to do ventilation, as well as how to transport people correctly, perform emergency uh, deliveries, anything that is done in an emergency as they get them onto the ambulance and take them to the hospital to get any further uh, care. This is our certified nursing assistant program. Sometimes it's better known as a CNA. The nice thing about the CNA program is you can get this done in as little as four weeks. So you can be certified very, very quickly. As a certified CNA, they work in many different places. They can work in home and hospice, in a hospital, in a retirement facility. As a CNA, they help people with any uh, physical needs that they may have. So they can help them with their dieting, they can help them with any of uh, their nutrition, they can help them go to the restroom, they teach them how to then move them from their beds, help them with their exercises, any of those needs that they, that they have. Uh, this is also a prerequisite for any type of nursing program that you may want to go into. So if you're interested in going into uh, become a licensed practical nurse or go on and get your RN, your registered nurse, it is a prerequisite to get your CNA license first. This is our licensed practical nursing program or LPN program. The LPN program is one of the few programs that does require quite a few prerequisites. So prior to entering this program, students will need to have their CNA license. They also have to take anatomy and physiology and their labs, and then they take an entry-level nursing exam. They can either take the TEAS or the HESI exam and pass it with the appropriate scores. Once they've done that, then they can apply for the program. In this program, they have a lot of hands-on experience as well as a lot of experience within the classroom to learn any terminology that they need, pharmacology, any of those required skills that are needed in the classroom. Then they work with these mannequins in here, which are pretty state of the art. They can feel a pulse, they can do things intravenous, they can do ventilators on these mannequins. One of them actually even births a child, so they can learn birthing techniques. And then they also spend clinical hours where they work with real patients one day a week for a 12 hour shift. Up here we also have our American Heart Association where you can come and get your BLS training, so basic life support or get CPR certified. This is our CDL program. In this program, students then at the end get their commercial driver's license. They do road and range in this program. They spend hours driving up here at Dixie Tech, as well as driving down in St. George and then being able to drive on the freeways as well. This is where you can come and learn how to be a electrician. 
We cover the residential electrical as well as commercial electrical. Residential means that you can then work in people's homes as well as hotels. And the commercial then means that you can work in big commercial buildings such as Dixie Tech or in a grocery store or other facilities such as that. For this program, they spend two years doing the residential portion and then you can do an additional two years and get that commercial portion as well and become fully certified. This is where you can come and learn how to be a plumber. For this plumbing program, we have a residential program as well as a commercial program. For the residential program, it is a three-year program and you learn how to do anything in a residential building, so like somebody's home. For the commercial program, it's only one additional year and you can get it on top of your residential program and then you can work in commercial buildings such as a university or a business, things like that. Uh, in this program, they actually work in the industry during the day and get paid and then they only come here for night classes two nights a week. This is our HVACR program, or sometimes known as the HVAC program. In this program, they come here for night classes, Monday through Thursday, and they learn how to do things such as heating, cooling, ductwork, as well as installing units. Uh, our HVAC program is also very different from any other in the state because it's HVACR. The R at the end stands for refrigeration, so not only do they teach you the heating and the cooling side of things, but they also spend a large portion of the program focusing on refrigeration. So you can do commercial refrigeration, refrigeration within somebody's home, as well as things like ice cream machines and soda machines. This is our welding technology program. In this program, students learn all of the different welding competencies to then be certified at the end of the course. They learn things such as gas metal arc welding as well as flux welding and many other different things. At the end of this program, they take the level one sense program through the American Welding Association, which then allows them to be an entry level welder at any position. Uh, other positions, they will also give them a certification and do testing for them. But once they go through this program, they're prepared to pass any tests that they would need to to then work in the industry. This is our diesel tech program. In this program, students learn everything front to back on anything that works in diesel. A lot of times that can mean big rigs such as these, but it can also be diesel trucks, it can be tractors, really anything that runs on diesel, and they do it front to back. So axles, engines, brakes, rotors, hydraulics, really all of it. Uh, diesel is really, really important, especially here in Utah where we're landlocked. Everything that we get, our clothes, our groceries, come on a diesel truck such as this. So the maintenance of them is very, very important. They always say in this program, if you bought it, a truck brought it. In this program, every single student who has finished this program is then placed directly into industry. This is our machining technology program. This program is really great because there are so many different places that you can go. Uh, they machine parts metal, plastic, and wood. So you can machine parts for guns, you can machine parts for uh, airplanes, you can machine parts for spaceships, all kinds of different things that you can do in this program. What they do is they actually start them here on the manual mills and they give them a blueprint and they do everything by hand. So they'll give them, say, a blueprint of a chess piece and they learn how to create that chess piece from a block of metal all by hand. Then they learn how to write G-code using the machines behind us and they're able to actually program and build their own blueprint. Then they can plug that into the CNC machines over here and in the time that they could do, say, one chess piece on a manual mill, now they can do 15 on a CNC machine. You can plug that into all the CNC machines and now you're making 100 or 200 parts in the time that you could do one on a manual mill. So it really is all about mass production and being able to mass produce parts. This is our automotive technology program. 
In this program, students learn the interior of the car. So they're not doing any exterior work, they're working on the inside. So axles, engines, brakes, rotors, any of those types of things that help the car run. Uh, at the end of this program, they do get the ASC certification, as well as we have partnership with Ford. So typically, if you want to go work at a dealership after getting certified, you also need to get additional certifications through that dealership. Because we have partnership with Ford, if they wanted to go get work at a Ford dealership, they wouldn't need any additional certifications. And currently, we're working on getting even more partnerships with other dealerships. This is our collision repair program. In this program, students learn how to do everything in the exterior of the car. So they're doing dings, dents, paint jobs. Uh, we have two paint booths over on the far side of the program that they can work on. And then we have this paint booth right behind me that's pretty state of the art. There's really only about three of these in Washington County. And it has some really cool features with it that students get to work on. The sides open up like garage doors so you can drive a car straight in and straight out. It also has a filtration system in there. So while you would still wear a respirator, you can stay in there about three times as long as you can stay in other paint booths. And then it also can heat up really quickly and really high heat. So you can actually bake things in there. If you want something to dry really quickly and you don't want drips to happen or dust to settle on it, you can place it in there and turn the heat up to 150, 160 degrees and actually bake the product so that it will dry very, very quickly. In this program, students also have a small portion of custom painting that they do. They do individual projects as well as they do one project at the end where we have a event up here at Dixie Tech called Hood Fest, which is a big car show. And students participate together to create a custom hood that they then present at that event.